Let's not go to church and sit in pews on Sunday and pretend we've got it all together. The world sees right through it. Basically, I was a normal person. Once you get on Porn Boulevard, the end of Porn Boulevard, you crash and burn. It just kept getting larger and larger and larger. It was an addiction. You have to be smart, guys. You have to understand that if, if you have trouble in a dark room with a computer, you have to be smart enough to fight against that trap to not go into that dark room with that computer. This is the Gettysburg Battlefield, site of one of the most fierce battles of the Civil War. It was here that over 51,000 young men were either killed, wounded, or captured. Men who were filled with great potential and dreams for the future, yet never lived long enough to fulfill those dreams because they became a mortal casualty of the battle fought here. Today, young men are in the midst of a battle, not one of cannons, guns, and quests for territory, but an inward one of sexual integrity that involves a man's very soul. We live in a society that views sex as a recreational sport to be experienced as an entertaining pursuit, void of any real adverse consequences. The advocates of this philosophy say, why not experience it? After all, we were physically made this way. We're just following the course of nature. So today, as never before in history, we see a thriving industry that through various products and means seek to attract the sexual interest of men. It is estimated that the pornography industry is a $13 billion a year business, and that excludes a large number of R-rated films which could be considered soft porn. As you become aware of your sexuality within the present day culture, with all of its temptations, you may wonder, is it possible to live a sexually pure life in this time? Can I employ habits, disciplines, or actions which will help me not to yield to sexual temptation? Are there spiritual resources that I can receive that will empower me to remain sexually pure? In this documentary, we will provide answers to those and other questions concerning this vital topic of sexual integrity. The loss of life on this battlefield many years ago was tragic, but the number of young men who fall prey to sexual promiscuity, pornography, and even sexual addiction is much greater. As a young man, you face a battle, but it is a battle that you can win. Some of you may be wondering whether or not it's actually possible for a person to become addicted to pornography since it doesn't seem to be drug related. Truth is, people turn to pornography for the exact same reasons they turn to drugs and alcohol, to find an escape from their problems. And once they discover that the pleasure that they receive from the pornography provides that escape, then it quickly becomes their drug of choice for coping with those problems. Professor Harper, does it have an escalating effect like the drug addictions? It really does, Brad. I've counseled with guys that have suffered some 
great personal losses due to the effects of pornography. They all started out as just casual users, but then they find they're spending more and more time with it and needing more even active personal encounters with it to get the same amount of pleasure that they had received from the lesser exposure in the past. You said they suffered great losses. What were you referring to? I know guys that have lost their jobs due to misusing the internet at work. Some guys have even destroyed their own marriages because of it. You see, the pleasure that we as guys get from pornography, it's all self-centered. So that makes it awfully difficult to develop any kind of a meaningful relationship with a spouse when you're focusing just on yourself. And with the way the world is now, we get it from everywhere. It's hard to fight off. Well, you're stronger if you try not to fight it alone. If you feel the temptation is getting the upper hand, get some support from someone you trust. Someone who can help you refocus from the temptation to the power that will help you overcome it. And I just want all you guys to know, I'm available for you anytime you might need me, whether at the college or here at home. Hey, Brad. Thought I saw you come in here. Yeah. I need a couple more sources for that paper I'm doing in history class. Kevin? What are you doing in the library? I thought you were allergic to books. I don't come here for the books, man. I come here for the chicks. See that blonde working in the front desk? Ooh. She's so hot, I'm surprised she hasn't set up the sprinkler system by now. I should have known. Anyways, I came by to invite you to my place later tonight. My parents are gone for the weekend, and I got the place all to myself. Weston and Zook are coming over, and Zook, he's bringing some of those new videos. And you know what kind of videos he specializes in. He says these are hotter than ones we saw last month. And one <laughs> even has that platinum gal you like so very much. Oh, yeah. You got to check out this website. Babes on this. <laughs> They're unreal. Anyway, I gotta go pick up some munchies and uh, special buzz juice if you catch my drift. Right after I pay my respects to the front desk. <laughs> uh, Kevin? Yeah, pal. My pen? Oh, sure. See you tonight. Tree. And you're watching every young man's battle. Well, we were writing for this new record, and um, of course, I had gotten through reading the book, and um, you know, it's still really on my heart and on my mind. And uh, you know, one of the things that I thought, man, there's just one sin pattern in my life that I just can't get rid of. You know, there's something that's just constantly hindering me. And it's just this battle that on that goes on with lust and. Um, you know, every young guy that I've run into, you know, with our band and with different guys you run into on the road, it just seems like it's something that, that the enemy has such a foothold in our lives about, and it just makes you sick, you know. And um, so I, I thought, um, you know, I, I would just try to find some scriptures that really applied to my life. And um, in 2 Corinthians 3, I was reading one day, and um, it talks about how um, our hope and our confidence doesn't come from us alone, it comes from Christ. And I thought, man, that's that's really amazing, you know, that um, to know that this battle isn't in my hands, you know, that this battle is in the Lord's hands. And so, um, you know, ultimately, when you're trying to get rid of something, you'd call it a change. And um, I, I thought, well, maybe I'll just write a song about change. And um, then I thought how Jesus, you know, went through every temptation and, and he overcame them perfect. And I thought, you know, he's a superhero to me, you know. And so I wrote the song, Superhero. And then I thought, no, that's kind of cheesy, so I, I made it into change. It's just a, a song about, you know, asking God to come and change us, make us different, you know, and to take away these sin patterns in our life, to get them right, and uh, to make everything um, pure before the Lord. There is a myth believed by many that you can do what you want as a teenager because after you become an adult, it won't matter. 
The person you are as a young man is the person you'll drag into adulthood. Decisions you make today will impact everything in your future. The sexual desires you feed as a teenager will be the same desires you'll want to feed when you're 40. As the old saying goes, you can't sow wild oats and then pray for crop failure. Even the event of marriage won't magically eliminate your desire to yield to sexual temptation. The sex business is thriving, and advancements in technology make it easier to access. 60% of all websites are pornographic. There were 27.5 million U.S. visitors to pornographic websites in January of 2002. Americans spent an estimated 220 million at fee-based adult websites. 320 million is projected by the year 2005. Annual rentals and sales of adult video and DVDs top $4 billion, and 11,000 titles are produced every year. This is more than 20 times as many films produced by Hollywood production companies. The internet and cable TV allow for easy and private access to pornography. Internet pornography has become so much more preferred over the print form that one pornographic magazine has seen a drastic reduction in its sales. Well, there's two parts of the culture that I think really affects the way pornography rolls throughout the, the society. I mean, the first part is the secular culture. And we know from looking around, all you have to do is walk out your front door. I mean, you'll see girls running by in bikinis, uh, jogging. You'll see beer commercials. You'll see billboards, uh, R movies. I mean, everywhere you turn, you can draw sensual images uh, right through those eyes and, and you know, feed that addiction. And then the other aspect is the uh, church culture has not done its job. What has happened, uh, you know, I get a lot of emails from young readers, and what seems to have happened is that pastors have not gotten detailed enough in church to let their kids know, and their parents haven't let them know exactly what sexual sin is. I get a lot of emails from girls and boys who are saying, you know, I always thought that avoiding sexual immorality means to just avoid intercourse, but that everything short of that is okay. Well, actually, of course, the Bible uh, says that you should avoid every hint of sexual immorality. It's a much broader kind of a definition. What I find is that since the church culture has not been doing its job, even the church kids uh, find themselves swimming in the same kind of a problem. It was kind of crazy, but I went up to my closet and looked at some of the things that I was wearing and realized that probably men were, you know, stumbling because of some of the things I was wearing. It started out magazines, then movies, and then um, with sexual partners watching pornography. Um, it just grew into something that I was unable to stop. Once you pick up the pornography, you won't be able to set it down. You won't be able to leave it alone. It's something that if it's across the room, you're going to glance at it and keep looking at it, and it just grows. Um, your desire for the pornography increases to a point that it becomes uncontrollable or unstoppable, and the decisions you make once involved with it, I mean, can ultimately change your entire life. You lose your family, you realize how much you hurt, and I used to, I used to hear my mom say, sorry, that how much she hurt inside, and I never realized how much it was until I spent the last year not being able to see her or talk to her, and now that I understand what that pain that I caused her is like to feel, it makes you want to change. More than anything I can think of is you lose someone you love over something you've done. It hurts not only them, but you. And pornography played the major role in losing my family, my friends. Um, there's a lot of people right now I can't even call. They were showing us the phone, and he said, you can call family or friends. Right now, I have no friends that I would want to call, and I have no family to call.
Well, there were a number of things that, that uh, got me involved with pornography and sexual sin, and it all started back when I was about six years old, and I found a, a stack of Playboy magazines under my dad's bed, and he didn't really know it, but through the years I kept going back. Um, never really got too heavy, uh, even through high school, though, because in high school football was my god. I was, uh, was fortunate enough to grow up in a uh, very conservative Christian home. I had uh, two great parents that loved me and took good care of me, and they sheltered me uh, tremendous amount. And I remember as a young boy, I was about 11 or 12, uh, I went out to get the mail one day and, uh, and the mail wasn't there but there was a magazine in the mailbox. I'm a, you know, I'm a 26 year old male and, and just for me pornography has always been, it's always enticed me, it's always, um, but growing up when I did, uh, we had to steal it from a liquor store. We had to um, find it and, and then bury it in the, the garden at one friend's house and then you know, hopefully four weeks later, it's still there. And so it was just a, um, it was just a real, real light taste of it. The girl walks by, and good looking girl, maybe a cheerleader or something, and just. Um, I remember looking at my first uh, Playboy magazine when I was in seventh grade. And I was ba babysitting a house, house sitting for a friend of mine. And, uh, you know, it's your typical teenager. You knew that the husband had a Playboy magazine. And uh, um, I found one, and I knew if there's one, there's more. And so I literally went through this, this family's house searching for porn. I haven't met a person yet that just has a subscription to Playboy and has been content with that for 20 years. It started as a curiosity and just it kept escalating. I mean, it started. Uh, started for me probably when I was in fifth grade. At that time, I began to memorize all of the dates uh, when my favorite pornography magazines would come into the drugstore campus. And I would be there at 9 o'clock when the doors opened on the days they came in because I wanted to see them right away, uh, you know, the new pictures of that month. It just kept getting larger and larger and larger. It was an addiction. Guys are always interested in girls. And we start off as a young age. Let's get real. You know, let's talk about uh, the dirty little secret. Um, you know, people say, what's that? And uh, pornography, it's just that. It's, it's, it's a secret that most guys, most pastors, most people in the church, most people out of the church, it's the one thing that, that we're, we're drawn into. I also started to chase women and uh, just really got heavily into that. One year after college, for instance, I, I had four girlfriends at one time. I was sleeping with three of them and I had, uh, was essentially engaged to be married to two of them. For me, I was uh, spending probably around fifteen to eighteen hundred dollars a month uh, on phone sex lines. There's always a lot of girls that were interested in me and it just kind of took me down quick. The answer is being honest. Let's not go to church and sit in pews on Sunday and pretend we've got it all together. The world sees right through it. They say we're fake. They say we're hypocrites. They say, and, and a lot of times they have good reason to say these things. I thought the book did an awesome job of giving a clear-cut definition of sexual immorality. It's not just not having sex. It's What really hit me was that it is being fulfilled sexually in any way by another person or another thing other than your spouse. There's a lot of people that are hurting and they're sitting in our church pews every Sunday morning. We're dealing with this issue and we're just pretending like it's not there. And we've got to start speaking out. We've got to start saying the truth. Otherwise, um, we lose our credibility in, in dealing with social issues. You know, let's get real. If, if you did a pornography addiction weekend at a church, nobody would come. Someone addicted to alcohol or drugs soon reveals the problem through physical signs. Not so with pornography or sexual addiction. A person hooked on pornography or sex suffers from the secret addiction. The temptation is strong and the battle is real. And this battle exists because what God wants for your sexual life is contrary to what is tolerated and even promoted by our society and culture. You were destined for this battle the day you were born and the nurse wrapped a light blue blanket around you and declared you a boy. God has a standard for sex. 
If there is a single Bible verse that captures God's standard for sexual purity, it is Ephesians 5, 3. But among you there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or of any kind of impurity. In his Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has committed adultery with her in his heart. The Bible says the body is not meant for sexual immorality. It also says flee from sexual immorality. The Apostle Paul writes, it is God's will that you should be sanctified, that you should avoid sexual immorality, that each of you should learn to control his own body in a way that is holy and honorable, not in a passionate lust like the heathen. God made you a sexual being and designed you to experience the full joy of sex within marriage. Given the times we live in, the persistent temptations of sex outside of God's will, and the easy access to sexual impurity, the battle is formable. In this battle, you need to be determined to be a victor and not a casualty. As rough as the battle can seem to be, you are not powerless in the face of this enemy. There is a winning strategy which you can put into action. We talk about something called starving the sumo, and what it has to do with is our sex drive. Um, our sex drive is something that's innate in us, that you know God has created in us. And a lot of times, uh, young men will say, oh, you know, I have a sex drive that's stronger than what most rabbits have. You know, how am I supposed to control these urges in me? What I found is that a lot of times, your true sex drive is much less than what you think. And it's really through watching the R-rated movies, looking at the computer screen, that we actually see the central images and begin to really puff up our sex drive. We sumo-size it. You know, you've seen sumo wrestlers on TV, and you know they don't get that way just by walking down the street. I mean, they gotta be eating and filling themselves up with all kinds of food to get up to that size. And what we're saying is that you know, there's, there's two components to your sex drive. There's the natural component, and then there's the part that you've blown up with all the things you've been looking at. And when we say starve the sumo, what we're saying is we need to begin to cut off those images that are feeding him and making him grow out of control. Because while he's still that sumo size, you say to yourself, I want to win, I want to win, but he can just knock you out of the ring anytime he wants because your sex drive can be so strong. And what we're saying is if you put the defenses in place and begin to starve him, he gets kind of skinny again, back to where he needs to be, where it can really be controlled through the natural processes that God has built into our lives. Every weekend in the fall, Americans turn their attention to the 100-yard war. Two football teams do battle at countless locations across the country. Each team has the goal of winning, but winning does not come just because it's a goal or a hope for result. It most often occurs when a team executes its plays and strategy better than the opponent. Coaches stress the importance of a strong defense to keep the opposition from scoring. Defensive players are trained to react quickly and move fast to make the play. Hesitation results in failure, and failure results in defeat. In battling sexual sin, you must develop a good defense. The first place to start is with the eyes. Over time, I began to understand how this concept of the covenant of the eyes becomes a defense uh, for us. Essentially, what the covenant of the eyes is, is a way to block that broken sewage pipe from spewing all the sewage into your mind. Um, the idea behind it is to take all these sexual images that are all around us, block them so that it doesn't get into your eyes and create that lust and create that sin as we lust. And as I began to make rules like this in each area of my life, I began to cut off those images and I began to breathe for the first time and there was some hope I'd be out of the prison. We want to talk to you a little bit as we draw up some plays on, on the chalkboard today about some things that you are going to face maybe when you go out there. We're going to take a football analogy, but we're going to, we're going to apply it to the game of life. We want to talk a little bit today about, the, first of all, about the trap play. And a lot of times we call this the sucker play. And the reason it's a sucker is because you get drawn in it 
Uh, do not be ignorant of Satan's devices. You get drawn in unawares. It happens to you, and you don't even know it, it's happening to you. And when a sucker is not a guy that, that trips and falls down. A sucker is a guy who trips and falls down and continues to trip and fall down at the same place every day. He hasn't figured out a way to get around it. That's one of the things we hope that we're going to be able to show you today. So we're going to, we're going to, one of the plays that we're going to be running out there is what we're going to call the, uh, the we're going to call 22 trap. And it's, it's set up like this. This is the offense. We're going to start out with a good double team right here, the center and the guard. This is the guy that we want all the, all the people watching to, to keep their eye on. This guy all game long has been getting beat up by this guy. And now on the sucker play, on the trap play, he's all of a sudden not going to block him, but is going to slip down inside. Now this guy, thinking that he's finally beat his man after all, all game of practice, all game of working, is going to come across the line. And when he comes across the line, we're going to pull the guard from the backside, and he's going to come along and blast that guy and uh, clear a hole for the running back to be able to run through. So that's a trap play, and we'll take a look at that here on the video. You take a look at number 71. All game long, he's been blocked by the guy over the top of him. And here on this one play, all of a sudden, nobody blocks him. Look what he does. He runs across the line, and he gets smashed by this guy coming and attacking him that he didn't, didn't know was attacking him. Here's the lesson to be learned in that. Sometimes if it's too easy, it's too easy. Your antenna ought to go up. What's going wrong that this guy hasn't blocked me? It's the same as, as life. You have to be smart, guys. You have to understand that if, if you have trouble in a dark room with a computer, you have to be smart enough to fight against that trap to not go into that dark room with that computer. You have to be smart enough to know that if you turn on the movie channel that there are going to be things on there that you don't want to see. You have to play defense and be smart enough not to turn on that television. And in order for you to be successful, you have to look at how you've been trapped in the past. Where, what has caused you to step into that trap and get blasted, blindsided by the, by the oncoming uh, offensive lineman? What is it that made you do that? And become wise and learn not to make that same mistake again. The Bible tells us that my people perish for a lack of knowledge. God gave you a brain. Use your brain. So now let's take a look at this, this same guy who's been trapped a couple times. Now all of a sudden he begins to wise up a little bit. He said, the last time this guy didn't block me, they trapped me. I will not step into that trap again. I'll not make that same mistake again. In fact, when the man over the top of him pulls and goes down inside, you can see what does he do? He closes right down the line of scrimmage. He closes down the area where which the enemy might be able to attack, makes it a smaller area. He does a great job of playing defense against the attacks of the enemy. And the truth is, in your life, there are going to be times when you are alone, you are uh, but you're by yourself, and the enemy attacks, there's nobody to help you. What are your defenses? How do you stand? You go back to the fundamentals. You put on the helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness, gird your loins with truth, shod your feet with the preparation of gospel, peace, carry the shield of faith and the sword of the spirit, and having done all to stand. But you've got to do all first. You've got to close down and, and resist the devil the way that you've been taught to do it and not step into that trap. And I need you to change, man! Hi, I'm Glenn. And I'm Jeremy. And we're with the band down here, and you're watching Every Young Man's Battle. When it comes to devotions and spending time with God and keeping your defense up as, uh, as far as your sexual purity goes, devotions is number one on the list um, for me. And I know devotions, spending that time every day with God, reading my Bible, praying, um, that stuff is, is so good and so beneficial. When I'm not doing it, I can tell right away in everything that I'm doing in my life. I'm short with people, don't have as much patience. Uh, just all those things, and it makes everything more difficult. Um, so you gotta keep that time with God really sacred and important to you, and that's gonna keep you strong and um, help you to rely on Him when those times come when, uh, when you might be tempted. Sounds like you get the same way when you don't have your devos that you do when you don't eat. Is that kind of... It's kind know, of a similar thing, yeah, thing. because uh, I like my food. Cranky, you, know? you get short with people. Yeah. Okay, Jeremy, that's about <laughs> enough.
right, let's see what Kevin's found now. <laughs> Why'd I do that? Should have known better coming from Kevin. Hello. Brad, where are you, man? Get over here. We're waiting on you. You're still coming, aren't you? Kevin, listen, man. I'm, I've got this paper due on Monday. What is wrong with you, man? It's Friday night. This is party time, not study time. You've got the rest of the weekend for that stuff. Get over here. And if you're not over here in 20 well, minutes... Okay, all right, okay. I'm on my way. Besides a good defense, a football team needs a productive offense. A team cannot win if it does not get points. It must move the ball down the field and cross the other team's goal line. Through a well-executed, powerful offense, a team can establish control of a game and maintain the upper hand on the foe. In the battle with sexual sin, you need a strong offense. You need to be proactive and do positive things which will make you stronger in this battle. The first pro action to focus on is choice. It is critical that you make a motivated choice to win the battle, just like an offensive team is motivated to drive the ball down the field. The next pro action to take is to maintain a close personal relationship with God through prayer and the study of God's Word. Another pro action that is extremely valuable is to have an accountability group. These people have permission to inquire of you regarding your sexual purity and the progress you are making as you fight the battle of temptation in this area. The mutual support and prayer experienced in this group will assure you that you are not fighting this battle alone. Your accountability group or partner is a key element to your victory. The battle is real. The battle is tough. But you can win it. Something we want you to understand about this game of football and this game of life. There is such a thing as offense and a such a thing as defense. And there have to be times in your life when you realize that you just got to hunker down and play D. And that's what we just talked about in that trap play. But in order for any team to be successful, at some point, you are going to have to go on the offense. And what I want to show you to, on this next play, which is called the double team block, which is the power of unity at work in your life. If you're struggling with pornography or whatever it is that you're struggling with, the truth is you cannot handle that problem by yourself. You have got to find a friend to be able to stand with, that you can be honest with. I'm, I'm struggling in this area. I need some help. We like to equate that to the double team block in football. Any good football team, defensive football team has what they call a good nose man. He's right over the top of the center. Usually he's really quick, deceptive, hard to handle. And in order to take care of that guy, we ask for a double team block. The center will tell the guy beside him, will tell the guard beside him, I need some help. I need you to help me on this block. And we're going to see on this next video the power of the double team block. And you'll notice on this play the movement, this area. We always told our football guys, run at the double team. Because if you run at the double team, if these guys have done their job, he's going to be cleared out of the way. And it's a lot more fun to be on offense than it is on defense. Let's take a look at that play. You can see how the center and guard come together, two men on one. A cord of three strands is not easily broken. The power of unity, two guys working together on one problem together. We can see the movement that they get on the opponent. And if you're struggling with pornography or you're struggling with other issues in your life, the thing that you need to do is find someone who sticks closer than a brother. Find someone that you can share your innermost feelings with. Someone that you can share the truth of the problem that you're dealing with and lock arm to arm and together the two of you go on the offensive against that problem. And I think that you'll find that as you begin to go on the offensive and you begin to attack the enemy, the Bible says, resist the devil and he'll flee. Some of the big issues, obviously, uh, pornography is not just an, an addiction for adults. It's an addiction also for kids and for teenagers. And uh, sex sells, you know, and uh, we know that sex is a multi-billion dollar industry. 
Uh, and a piece of that is that, uh, you know, one of the pieces of sex now is younger is better, you know. And so it affects uh, my ministry as a youth pastor because uh, being in Las Vegas, you know, I see guys who own strip clubs who are out there and uh, trying to recruit high school girls. And even had a couple girls in my ministry who have uh, been in strip clubs and who have uh, become a part of that scene. Pornography is not just something that's reserved only for the adults, but it's also something that comes across for uh, adolescents as well. Retired Army officers George Hodge and Tom Schmidt explain how military tactics relate to developing a course of action for victory in the battle with pornography and sexual temptations. In the military, in tactics, when we have a fight, we really have three major considerations. One of them is what is our mission. Of course, we have an mission to accomplish, an objective to achieve. The second one of those is, who's our enemy and what is he like? Do we know our enemy and what are his tactics, what are his methods and what are the, what are the, the, the means that he has available to him? And the third is, what are the environment that we're in? Are we fighting at daytime? Are we fighting at night? Are we fighting in harsh weather? Are we fighting in good weather? Are we fighting on terrain that's flat or mountainous or desert? I think the same would be true for us in the battle against pornography. What is our enemy? What, is, what are his tactics uh, to find us at our weakness? What, uh, what is our environment? Well, our environment is essentially a country that, uh, a society that, uh, that is pretty permissive in terms of what we see with our eyes and what we hear with our ears, what's in the movies, what's in the songs, how we talk, how we dress. Uh, and then the other issue is what our mission. And for a Christian young man, for someone who wants to grow, who wants to achieve the full stature that uh, God has designed for him, uh, then there is the issue of purity, not just avoidance of impurity, but active purity. Let me give you a battlefield analogy. What we've got representative here is a battalion task force in the defense. And the way they're set up is they're expecting the enemy's main attack to come over here on the, on the west side of their zone. As the enemy comes down through here and they start to engage our forces in this engagement area, he'll realize that he's not gonna be able to break through. So what he'll do is he'll take his follow-on forces and he'll have them come over here to a side and he'll look for a seam, something that's a weakness of ours that he can exploit. The whole time maintaining pressure against our forces over here. We've gotta be able to look sufficiently for him as he tries to exploit one of our seams and we've gotta call back because we have a defense in depth, we've got to call back to our reserve force and get them shifted over to meet that defense, to meet that attacking enemy while all the time still maintaining the fight against his initial main attack over here. The most exciting thing for me about the fight is seeing people win, seeing others win, seeing others who have experienced defeat now having a vision for winning and experiencing success in winning. And every little success multiplies to more successes and continuing successes. That is the most exciting thing, uh, that we are more than conquerors, even though our experience may be uh, having been defeated time and time again. And as I see men uh, winning that battle, aggressively fighting the battle, losing some, winning more, uh, that's exciting to me. You see people every day that are constantly fighting this battle like you have, that are constantly going through looking at pornography and balancing spiritual stuff. And that would be a constant battle to, uh, like one always outweighs the other. For me, it was, uh, it was um, living life in categories, is the term that I like to say. Uh, recognizing that uh, there was the church category, there was uh, Chris who was in his leisure time, and there was Chris who struggled with pornography. And that's how Satan is using this, this, this sin. And uh, what ended up happening was the Chris who struggled with pornography started to take over the Chris in his leisure time. And that started to take over the Chris in, in his work environment, his family environment. And that's what people don't understand, it affects your, your whole, not only your whole walk with the Lord, or it affects your whole life. And I recognize that, uh, that I, couldn't, I couldn't do it anymore. If I could say anything to a, young, a high school student at all, I would say try to look past, you know, what you see on the outside. And 
every single one of us has a longing for to find that that someone that we you know connect with that our that we feel is our soulmate for the rest of our life. You have to actually believe that God is going to do what you ask Him to do. I mean, He wants to, but how can He do something if you don't believe that He's going to do it? And if you can just look past and try to see, you know, the heart of a woman, how beautiful that is. And when you do, then I think you'll be, begin to treat her, you know, when you find that one and you begin to realize it's more than just what she looks like. Because who you marry, she's not going to look like that forever. We need to kind of be uh, uncomfortable. We get too comfortable. You take a stand against porn and uh, you'll, you'll definitely carve out a little niche in history. I started to cut off, blockade my eyes from all the sensual images that are around me in this culture. The first couple of weeks when I started to make that covenant, I lost practically every time I tried. I would, you know, try to bounce my eyes away from the billboard and they'd bounce right back to it. I'd try to bounce my eyes away from the jogger and I'd look at her once and then once in the rearview mirror as I went by. I mean, it just seemed impossible. But you see, I had made a decision and I wasn't going to quit. I didn't care how long it took. During the second, oh, probably the third and fourth weeks, it started to get to the point where I was winning about, you know, I was playing 500 ball, you know, half the time I would bounce my eyes away and then I would, wouldn't bounce them back. The other half I would and I just going, well, you know, it's getting better. During the fifth and the sixth weeks, I began winning big time. It takes determination to actually get off any addiction you're on. Have courage because I know that to be able to sit down with somebody and say, I have a struggle is the toughest discussion that any teenage boy will ever have. And I really, I really wish I had the courage at 18 to be able to do that. Instead, it led me down a life that, uh, that uh, I didn't necessarily need to go down because I didn't have the courage to say, hey, I need some help and I need God, I need the church to come around me to help me with it. I met a guy at a, at a, that's in a six month living facility for, for pornography addiction and he said to me, he said, Pornography will take you to places that you never thought you would go. I'd just like to let you know if you're out there and you're a person that, that searches for porn over the internet or you're heavily involved with porn, I'd just like to let you know that it's not all that it's cracked up to be. Pornography has a very, very strong grip. It grips your heart, it grips your mind, and it, it spirals downward. Um, pornography is, I want you to look at what you have, what you'd think is your rock bottom point, something that you would never ever do. Maybe it would be whatever, whatever your rock bottom thing that wouldn't go past pornography, whatever. Those, those are the type of things that you'll end up doing because pornography has such a tight chain on you that the, the more you indulge in it, the tighter the chain gets and the tighter that, that you'll end up doing things that you've never dreamed that you would do. And people try to say that pornography is great. People try to show couples and, and people just having a great time, and, but it's really not all that it's cracked up to be because that chain gets tighter and tighter and you end up being choked. The life is choked right out of you by, by all that. And so I just would admonish you to, to check what you're doing and, and, and check what you're looking at because it's a lot greater of a beast than you think it is. Basically, I was a normal person. Uh, I, I wasn't uh, some guy hanging out uh, at bars or a bum, or um, I wasn't a pervert in the sense that, you know, people look at somebody and say, I know there's something wrong with him and just tell. I mean, I, I, I was essentially a normal person. I had good friends. I, I, uh, I led a normal life, except for this one small but very potent and very destructive segment of it that I kept very secret and very close to myself and didn't let, let anybody know about it. And part of the shock and horror for my dear friends and family when, years ago when I was first arrested was that they just, there was no clue. They looked at me and they looked at the, you know, the, um, the all-American boy. And I'm, uh, I mean, I wasn't perfect, but it was, it was, it, I want to be quite can, candid with you. I was, it, yeah. I was okay, okay, uh, I was. And the basic humanity and, and basic spirit that God gave me was intact, but it unfortunately became overwhelmed at times. And I think people need to recognize that it's not some kind of 
the, 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 those of us who are who have been so much influenced by violence in the media, in particular pornographic violence, are not some kinds of inherent monsters. We are your sons and we are your husbands. And we grew up in regular families. And pornography can reach out and snatch a kid out of any house today. He, he snatched me out of my home. It snatched me out of my home 20, 30 years ago. And as diligent as my parents were, uh, and they were diligent in protecting their children, and as good a Christian home as we had, and we had a wonderful Christian home, uh, there is no protection against the kinds that the kinds of influences that are loose in the society that, that, that tolerates. Mm -hmm. You feel this really deeply, don't you? Ted, outside these walls right now, there are several hundred reporters that wanted to talk to you. Yeah. And you asked me to come here from California because you had something you wanted to say. This hour that we have together uh, is not just an interview with a man who's scheduled to die tomorrow morning. I am here and you are here because of this message that you're talking about right here. You really feel that hardcore pornography and the doorway to it, softcore pornography, is doing untold damage to other people and causing other women to be abused and killed the way you did others. Listen. I'm no social scientist, and I haven't done a survey. I mean, I, I don't pretend that I know what John Q. Citizen thinks about this. <clears throat> but I've lived in prison for a long time now. And I've met a lot of men who were motivated to commit violence just like me. And without exception, every one of them was deeply involved in pornography without question, without exception deeply influenced and consumed by an addiction to pornography. There's no question about it. The FBI's own study on serial homicide shows that the most common interest among serial killers is pornography. Um, I think what I, what I hope will come of our discussion is I think society deserves to be protected from itself because because of we, as, as we've been talking, there are, there are forces that loose in, in, in this country, particularly, again, uh, this kind of violent uh, pornography, uh, where, on the one hand, well-meaning, decent people will condemn behavior of a Ted Bundy while they're walking past a, a, a magazine rack full of the very kinds of things that send young kids down the road to be Ted Bundy's. That's the irony. We're talking here not just about more. We're talking, I'm, what I'm talking about is going beyond retribution, which is what people want with me, going beyond retribution and punishment, because there is no way in the world that killing me is going to restore uh, those beautiful children to their parents and, and, and correct and, and, and soothe the pain. But I'll tell you, there are lots of other kids playing in streets around this country today who, who are going to be dead tomorrow and the next day and the next day and next month because other young people are reading the kinds of things and seeing the kinds of things that are available in the media today. Let you inside 
My, my favorite positive result, uh, it kind of comes out of my favorite story, really. I had a, a young man that was coming through my pre-marriage classes. He's ready to get married and had this, a beautiful fiance, just a nice couple. Uh, knew both families, grown up in the church that I was attending at the time. And um, he, in listening to my talk on purity one night in the pre-marriage class, he got convicted. And he actually went to his fiance and told her the problems he had essentially watching a lot of R-rated movies as well as some pornography. What happened was she just had a fit. You know, women don't always understand this issue. And uh, she, she essentially threw the ring back at him and said, look, you get over this, you get over it right now. The wedding date is set. And if you don't get over this now, we're gonna have to tell everybody why uh, we're not getting married. And it's gonna be pretty embarrassing. I've never seen anybody with that much incentive to win. Uh, I had a talk with him, gave him the defenses, set him up. He broke free. Uh, they got married, and I just talked to her probably about a year ago, and she said, oh, he's just the greatest husband. We have the greatest relationship together, sexually and otherwise, and he's everything I'd ever dreamed. And now, just a couple of weeks ago, he called me, and I was so afraid. You know, there was a message on my desk, oh, he's fallen. I was so afraid he's fallen. And what he asked was, he just wanted some advice on raising kids. And I thought, isn't this great? He had the victory, and now he's moving on to more important things. He's not stuck back there. He's free walking in God, moving forward, passing on the truths to another generation. That's what victory is, and that's what freedom is. It's, you don't have to be stuck in that quagmire. I would just say you got to make a choice. Um, you got to decide right now whether you're going to live for God or you're going to live for yourself. And one thing that both Craig and I know is that once you get on Porn Boulevard, the end of Porn Boulevard, you crash and burn. And so you have the opportunity right now to decide, am I gonna get off Porn Boulevard or am I gonna keep going down this street? And if you keep going down this street, I guarantee you, you will find yourself in a place you don't wanna be. Don't do it. I mean, it's not good, I mean, it will screw you up bad. I mean, you might not believe me, but just wait. No. Actually, don't wait, just listen to me now. <laughs> to, to be able to get to a place to where, yes, the struggle's there, but because of the overcoming that I've been able to overcome over the last several years, uh, just trusting God to know that He's gonna help me, even in the middle of this brokenness that I experience. For a young man who's out there and struggling with the same things I'm struggling with, I just want you to understand there is freedom. That's the thing that you most wonder about. Can you be free? Are you evil? No. You're simply stuck. You need to begin to break these habits and stand up. You are free in Christ. I want to remind you that you were set free. The Bible says that we are free from sin, that we are free to walk cleanly, to walk righteously. We're no longer slaves to sin. We can now choose to be slaves to righteousness. You can do it. What you need, you know, the fact is you are free. Now what you need to do is walk free. And it's time to put your defenses into place and rise up and believe. God will help you and you will be free. You know you're in the midst of the battle. And in today's permissive culture, it is a tough fight. Remember, God's standard is different from the world's. God's standard is purity, no matter the source of temptation. He has given us the promise of victory. 
if we will stay true to Him. The Bible says, no temptation has seized you except what is common to man, and God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, He will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. You see before you the words of a simple prayer of commitment. You can pray this prayer and find forgiveness over past sin and failures. Through this prayer, you can make your commitment to victory over sexual sin. Now, if you prayed this prayer, share this good news with someone else so that they can be supportive of your decision and your new life. If there's a single Bible verse that captures God's standard for sexual purity, it is Ephesians 5, 3. But among you, there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or any kind of impurity. Thanks for watching. Now go win the battle. Christ.